Hi, George here. And today I'll be taking a look at the Photoshop Elements 2025 Organizer. Now, if this is your first time using Photoshop Elements, the first thing you'll see after an installation is this screen right here. And then over here, kind of right side in the middle, we have three buttons. The Organizer, we'll look at that in just a moment. Photo Editor, this is the Photoshop Elements Editor. And then Video Editor, this is the Premiere Elements Video Editor. So we'll be taking a look at this right now. To launch the organizer, just go ahead and click on that button. Now again, if this is the first time you've launched this, you're going to be getting a pop-up right here, which will ask if you want to import an existing Photoshop Elements organizer catalog. So if you've used Elements in the past, you can import your catalog and have all of your pictures back here from your previous catalog. If you're brand new to Photoshop Elements, you won't have anything in here, and you'll have to bring in some media. Now, you don't need to bring in media if you don't want to. You can go right over to the editor and begin working on images over there. If you do that, when you save those images, they will then be showing up over here in the organizer automatically. If you want to bring in images to begin with, it's very easy to do. Go up here where it says Import. Click on that. You can import from files or folders. We'll be doing this in a second. You can import directly from your camera or card reader or from a scanner or you can import in bulk. This is just going to allow you to import from different folders on your computer. So we'll just do from files and folders. This is the easiest way to do this. Click on that. And this brings up a folder window, as you can see right here. I've already put some stuff in here. These are just finished images from a lot of my YouTube videos. So let's import these things. I'll click on one here. Let's scroll down to the bottom of my list and then hold the shift key down, click on the last one. So I've now selected a whole bunch of images in here. Then just choose open. And it's going to import those into the organizer. Now, when it does this, it's not putting the actual images into organizer. What we're actually getting here are thumbnails of the images. The images stay in their same location on the hard drive. They're still there where we had them in the first place. And we just have thumbnails that are linked to those images. And these are all just thumbnails. If you double click on an image like this, this will bring it up full screen so you can see how that looks. Up here it says grid, click on that and go back to the grid. So very easy to work with this. Now you may be asking yourself, why do I want this? Why do I want to have a whole bunch of pictures in here in the organizer? Okay, sure, it's a nice easy way to see these, but you can do the exact same thing with just a folder on your computer or a couple of folders, whatever you feel like. The main reason for working with the organizer is allowing you to, as the name suggests, organize your images in different ways. And this is especially valuable if you have a whole lot of images. The more images you have, the more valuable the organizer becomes because you can set these up so you can search for images in different ways, and make it easy to pinpoint or find the picture that you're looking for. And there are several ways to do that. You can just use the approach that you like the best. The easiest is just to put tags on these things. You find your tags over here, right hand side. Now, when these are imported, Photoshop Elements is going to go in and put in some smart tags automatically onto these. It will analyze a picture, See if it figures out what it is. If it does, it will give it some automatic smart tags. And you can see those if you right click on an image. So these are the smart tags that Elements went in and applied onto this one picture. Let's see how it did. Animal, elephant, wildlife, safari, zoo, wild. Maybe a zoo doesn't work because it's not a zoo picture. So I can just remove that one. So remove smart tag and zoo. Right click again. And here's our smart tag list that remains. It does a pretty good job about that. You may find ones that are not quite right. Sometimes it's over here. It may not have any smart tags applied to it. That's okay because you can always add your own tags over here on the right hand side. These come with Photoshop elements, nature, color, photography, and other. And to apply a tag, you just grab that tag and drag it onto your picture like that. Little icon will go away in a second. There you go. So this now has that nature tag applied to it. If I right click on this and look at smart tag, it's not in here anywhere as these are keyword tags, if we look at keyword tags, there it is. So we can see that this now has that keyword tag on it. Also, if you go over here where it says information, click on that tab, let's click on this picture. This is information about this one particular image. And down here at the bottom, there is that nature image tag right there. So you can easily see the tags that are on this. Now the metadata doesn't show the smart tags, but it does show all the image tags. If you want to have more tags, it's real easy. Let's just go over here. Click on this little plus sign. You can then come in and give it a new tag. You can edit the icon if you want to. You can choose a category. Let's just call this one dog. I have a lot of dog pictures in here. Choose OK. 
So I did this under the nature category. So I have a new keyword tag here, dog. So I take this, drag it onto this image over here, let go. You see, there it is. That'll go away in a second and it's gone. Let's look at the information on this one. And there is that dog image tag right down below. Let's put this on a few more of these. Let's just grab this dog, put it over here. There's a dog. Let's bring this right down here. There's a dog. Another dog over here. And let's do one more dog right over here. And then one final dog right down there. And the reason why adding tags is useful is that now I can go over here, just put a check mark right there, and it shows me all the images that are tagged with dog. So you can use these tags over here, these keyword tags to quickly narrow down a search to just images that include that particular keyword tag. Get back to the big list, go up here where it says back, click on that, and we're back to our full list. So the more tags you have on your images, the easier it is to use this trick in here to narrow down your search to specific images. Another way to work with this, for your left-hand side where it says My Albums, if you want more albums, click on this little plus sign. And then it's over here, right-hand side, give the album a name, and let's just call this one Portraits. Once you have that set up, just choose OK. And we now have a new Portraits album over here, left-hand side. It's kind of like using the tags on the right-hand side. Let's now take this image, I'll drag this over here, drop it onto Portraits. Let's go up to this one here. Click on that, see that check mark, drag it over here onto Portraits. So it's kind of the opposite of working with the tags. With the tags, you drag a tag onto your image. Over here, you drag your image over into an album. Same thing though, click on the Portraits album and here's the images in that album. Now your images can be in multiple albums. Let's go back to all media. Let's do one more in here so you can see that. Over here's a little down arrow right here. We can make a new album or we can make new album categories so that you can have main categories and then albums inside of those categories just for better organization. Let's just do one more new album here. I'm gonna call this one Flowers like that. I'll leave it at top level, choose OK. It's our Flowers category. Let's take this same picture over here, drag it up here into Flowers, let go. And it's now in this album. If I click on Flowers, there it is. If I click on Portraits, it's also here. So that shows you that you can have one image in more than one album. And back to all media. Now you don't have to use albums. You don't have to use keyword tags. It's up to you. I tend to like keyword tags. What I'll often do is I'll do keyword tags for everything I can think of for my individual images. So they all have good tag structures. And then if I'm working on a project with a few of my images, I'll go over here left hand side to make an album for just that project. Also up here we have folders, click on folder. These all came from the same folder and it was named projects. So that's where these are at. If these were in a different folder, I would then see that over here. So this, my folders is gonna be showing you the folders on your hard drive or network where these images are located on the actual physical media. So albums is kind of like a virtual folder and the folders is the actual folders. Across the top here, you can narrow this down looking at just people if you want to. I haven't tagged anything for people yet, but I can tag them for people or for places, or for events. So different ways of coming in here and tagging these different images if you want to. And then if you really want to get picky, if you have say thousands of images and you want to really narrow down what you're looking for, you can do that with the find menu up here. Lots of different ways of finding imagery. You can look by media type right in here. You can look at history, when it was imported on, emailed, printed, exported. So if you know some information about your images, you can find that here pretty easily. If the images have captions or notes, you can look for that or by file name if you have that. But the most powerful way in here to look for images is up here by details. Click on that. This brings up a new little pop-up box right here. And this allows you to search for any or all. So you have either or or and files that match what you have down here. File name or shutter speed, capture date. So you can choose what you want. Let's come down here to file type and is JPEG. So we have that as an option. You can choose all these different file types. So let's do JPEG and then choose search. And here we go, these images are all JPEGs. I normally save to PNG, which is why you're not seeing all my images in here, but these are all JPEG images. Let's go back to all media again. So you can use that very easily to search for specific details. Notice that the last search is still sitting here. Now you can add more in this, let's click on this. Let's say I do any one of the following search criteria. This is an or. Let's come down here and let's just do file type again. 
In this time, I'll set this for PNG. So either JPEGs or PNGs and then search. Now, if you do a fancy search in here and you can add more and more of these different lines in here, if you're doing a real fancy search, you can save that search. Click on this, choose to save this. I'll just do file type, search. There's a file type, those are missing just a few. I may have had some bitmaps in there as well. So this includes the JPEGs and the PNG images. Let's go back here again. Now if we go back up here to find, and down here by saved searches, you can then choose any saved search right here. This is one that we just saved and choose open. It will then do that search again. You also can make a new search. This just goes back to that metadata search dialog box. So again, very powerful tool to organize and find images in a very large catalog. The larger your catalog, the more valuable this tool becomes. There's a lot more you can do with this, a lot more details in here I won't be getting into in this short video, but I do cover this completely in my training for Photoshop Elements. If you want to find out more about that, I'll put a link for that at the top of the description. Now, if you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit that like button. Make sure you also subscribe if you haven't already subscribed and hit that bell icon for notifications when I put up new videos and I'll see you next time.